Well, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. It's raining in Austin, Texas. Uh, let it rain. Amen. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, I'll give some of you guys a few moments to come on. Uh, welcome to Thursday Night Inspiration. Yeah, the best is yet to come. Don't know what you're going through. Don't know what the enemy has thrown your way. But I'm telling you, if you trust the Lord, lean not to your own understanding, but acknowledge him in all your ways. He shall direct your path. I want to encourage somebody tonight. The best is yet to come. Don't give up on God because he will not give up on you. Once again, I'm Pastor Ed, the senior pastor of the Love Center Bible Fellowship Church right here in Austin, Texas, and I am the founder of Ed Reynolds Ministry. Thank you for stopping by on tonight and uh, being a part of Thursday Night Inspiration. But before I go any farther, I have to just take a few moments out to really thank the 500 plus of you who sent me birthday wishes on yesterday. I was overwhelmed with joy, overwhelmed uh, with so much love that came from so many different people. So I know I can't get to everybody and say thank you, but I just wanted to take a few minutes out and say thank you to all of my friends from everywhere who sent me text messages, emails, who sent messages by way of home and pigeon, <laughs> however you did it. I want to thank you for doing that. You took out of your day um, to send me a well wish. Thank you to all of those who um, sold into my life. My cash app was just flipping all night long. Thank you, thank you so much. I appreciate the monetary gifts. And then let me give a huge shout out to my church family. Could you put your hands together, amen? Yes, yes, yes. Put your hands together and thank the greatest church. You know what? I had an opportunity to go back to Houston and serve there um, at NLC, but I'm so glad that Vic and I decided to stay here in Austin and pastor the greatest church in the world. Can we give them another big hand clap to my church family who made my 53rd birthday the best that I have ever experienced. Thank you for all your love. Thank you for your monetary gifts. Thank you for all the food and the place you turned it into, you know, a beautiful place of celebration for me on this past Sunday. And I want to thank you to my friends who drove in from Houston or wherever you came from. You didn't have to do that. Thank you for taking the time out of your morning to come be a part of my birthday celebration. It was amazing. Once again, to everybody, I speak to hundredfold return on everything you did, your time, your talent, your treasure, all the seed that you sowed on that week, on that day. I want to appreciate you for it. Let me give some shout outs. Thank you, Jerry. Happy birthday to me, man. You know, I started celebrating my birthday at the end of September. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And here's why. Let me say something about that. Listen, um, for 20-something years, you know, I worked for a ministry. I wasn't able to celebrate my birthday because this is the time that they have their conference, and every year I would be working during the conference. And so, listen, I've decided that for the next 50 of my birthdays, I'm going to do it big. I'm going to do it long. Amen. Praise the Lord. Because, listen, birthdays are a gift from the Lord, and we should celebrate them as much as we possibly can. Big shout out, Jared. Good to see you, my brother. To my beautiful cousin, Janice, God bless you. Good to see you, Wilma. Hey, Wilma, I know you were looking for me the other day. I had to bust a move. Amen. I came to look for you, but you was not up there. They said you was eating breakfast. Amen. I don't understand how you could be eating breakfast at, at that time in the morning. But uh, <laughs> good to see you, Wilma. And also, let's see who else is out there. Good to see you, John Troy. Hey, man, I think you're in Chicago, John. I think you may be in Chicago. No, that's, that's, that's Troy. Okay, West Coast. Amen. But anyway, waiting. Good to see you. God bless you. Hey, y'all, happy birthday for my beautiful wife. Y'all give Sister Vicky a big hand clap. Amen. Oh, listen. Let me also give a big shout out to Vicky because Vicky have uh, allowed me 
to just Cosh Blanc, amen. She has taken me all over the state to celebrate my birthday. And last week, we flew to Atlanta, Georgia. I have a brand new little nephew. He's only like a month and a few days old. We flew to the ATL, and we dedicated him to the Lord. Can we give the Lord a hand clap for that? We dedicated him to the Lord. But Vicki, I love you so much for all of what you have did for me this month. You have really went out your way to make this month very special. Allow me to buy stuff that I didn't need, uh, buy stuff that I wanted. Thank you. I love you so much. I appreciate you. And the weather is supposed to change, so your boy is coming home tonight. Amen. Yes, I am. Indeed. Well, I'm at home. I'm coming to our other home tonight, so look out for me. Amen. Thank you so much. Be careful. I will. Yes. Come in at 6 a.m. Who is that? Yeah, okay, well, I'm, I don't know about Oh, okay, you say you go to work at 4 o'clock. Sorry for busting you out like that. Hey, Tiff, good to see you. God bless you. Can we give Tiffany a big hand clap? Amen for joining in. Amen. You know, I had received a lot for my birthday. I really did. I received a lot, and I'm so grateful. Uh, you know, my my um, my attitude is this. It's more blessed to give to re than to receive. And, um, you know, I received so much. I just think it was because of the consistency of me being generous to people. Uh, however, I received something that was greater than anything that I could touch. I went to the doctor on last, what day was that, Wilma? I went to the doctor on don't know what day it was, and um, I got a good report from my doctor. Praise be the name of the Lord. Amen. I, you know, came the day before my birthday, and so I, I'm just, I'm so blessed. I couldn't have asked for a greater gift because you know what? The gift of health is better than the gift of anything. You can get all the money in the world, but if you sick, where are you going to spend it? Amen. I mean, so I'm grateful to God for the team of people that help me stay healthy and um, that keeps me, you know, pointing in the, um, in the right direction. So I'm blessed that um, I was able to walk out of that hospital with a clean bill of health. All is well with my soul. Amen. Good to see you, Michael Lindsay. Thank you, Crystal. Good to see you. Good to see you, Deborah Staten. Once again, everybody, thank you, thank you, thank you. I can't say enough thank yous. If you don't get text messages from us, it's probably because you're not in our, um, it's not in our whatever they call it, Grace. She know what it is. But we usually send text messages out. I did send one out yesterday thanking everybody for making it happen. Let me give you a couple of things that I want you to mark on your calendar. If you're a member of the Love Center, um, mark the November the 14th is Vision Night. Um, November the 14th is Vision Night. Uh, we're going to come together on that night. We're going to share the vision. Amen. Share the vision and um, go into 2020 with a new outlook on what God called us to do. And I'm asking every member of the Love Center to be a part of um, Vision Night, November 14th, right here um, at um, the um, for the City Center here in Austin, Texas. Please be a part of that. Amen. Also, if you are a member of our church and um, you know November, the second Sunday, November, is our Finish Strong Seed Sunday. We believe, God, that we will go over our $50,000 plus budget. Somebody give the Lord a hand clap. Amen. No, give the Lord a hand clap. And if you like to give to that, I'm still believing God for three people or three families or three whatever to give $5,000, amen, so we could finish 2019 strong. I mean, if you ask the Lord for it, he'd give it to you. I asked him for $10,000, and um, he's just about giving it to me, amen. Somebody say amen, amen. and I'm going to sow that into the kingdom of God. I already given some of it into the kingdom of God. I just want um, you to be a part of it so you can give by going to um, our Facebook page. I'm sorry, going and texting, give to TLC to 77977. They'll put the information on the screen in just a few minutes. Good to see you, Shirley Thickpen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, it's time to get into the word. And uh, hey, Pastor Ed, don't know who that is, but hey, hey Shirley, how you doing? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. Good to see you. I'm going to pray and we're going to get right into the word. Um, thank you once again for all that you do for us and all that you did for me on this past week. And uh, I'm eternally grateful to so many of you for doing that. I really appreciate it. And especially for those of you who are outside the parameter of our church. You're not a member, but you're just a friend. You're just a partner. You thought it was befitting 
to let me know how much you loved and appreciate me in a very tangible way. And I just want to say thank you. You didn't have to send money from Atlanta. You didn't have to send money from all the different cities you sent it from. You did it because you recognized that I was worthy to be honored in that way. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Let me pray and let me get right into the word. Father, in the precious name of Jesus, we thank and we give you glory, praise, honor, and thanksgiving. We thank you for your word that is truth without error. And Father, we thank you that the hearer of the word will become a doer. And we thank you that our lives will never, ever be the same. In Jesus' precious mighty name, somebody shout amen. amen. Guys, do me a huge favor. Why don't you go ahead and share the video, like the video, share, and, he, do, and invite someone to watch. Like, share, and invite. Do it right now. Like, share, and invite. Let's get the gospel spread around the country. Amen. Go with me in your Bible to the book of Psalms 100, verse number 5. Psalms 100 verse number five and I want to continue my teaching on the power of praise and worship and I begin this series out of a desire to see people more thirsty and more hungry after the things of God. I think we take for granted several things in the word of God that are vitally important for us to reach our, our full potential of experiencing who God is. We know how to use our faith. We know how to pray. Uh, but unfortunately, when you look at a Sunday morning service, in some instances, people are not really engaging God at the level that they should be. And so I saw that happening in my own congregation and it really bothered me because I don't believe that uh, we should lack when it comes to giving God what is rightfully due to him. That we should be willing regardless of what we're going through to give God the praise that's due to him. And so I begin this series and I'm going to end the year with this series because I want us to go into 2020 with an attitude of gratitude and learning how to praise God in spite of what we go through. We all will go through stuff. We will all experience storms in our life that we do not want to uh, experience. However, we know that there's a God out there that there's a God that exists that he could bring us through in this storm. If I'm going to be in a storm, I want to be in it with God on the boat. Amen. amen. Somebody ought to say amen to that. Amen. And so Psalms 100, verse number one through five, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye presents with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is good. Somebody shout, he is good. Amen. Come on, everybody shout, he is good. good. Shout it for me one more time. He is good. good. Come on, shout it one more time. Know ye that the Lord, he is good. good. It is people. uh, He is good. Um, He that had made us and not us ourselves and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and do what, class? Bless his name. Somebody shout, bless the name of the Lord. So he said, bless his name, for the Lord is good, his mercy endureth forever, and his truth endureth to all generations. Now go to John 4, verse number 23. Once again, we're talking about an attitude of gratitude and learning how to worship and praise God in spite of. Now, as I said a few moments ago, that we go through stuff. You can put your ribbon right there, but I want to go to Psalms 34, 19, because I, the question was asked of me, by a precious sister that's gone through something in her life. She said, Pastor, why does it look like, you know, those of us who serve the Lord look like we go through more than those who don't? Well, let's make sure we get a clear picture of what happens to the life of the believer. Number one, God does not put anything on us. Amen. I got to say that one more time. God does not put sickness on us. He does not put disease on us. He does not, it's not his will for us to be impoverished. It's not his will for us to be saddened and downtrodden. It's God's will that we have victory in every area of life. However, God does say in the book of Psalms, which was written by David, who went through a whole lot of stuff. He says in Psalm 34, 19, many are the afflictions of the what class? Righteous but many, many, he didn't say a few afflictions, he said many are the afflictions of the word righteous, but he makes a promise that he shall deliver us out of them all. Somebody ought to shout amen to that. That God
God makes a promise to the believer that even though we go through stuff in life, that he is going to deliver us out of them. So we got to know that there is the possibility that a storm may blow up with our name on it, may brew up with our name on it. And just here recently, a very dear friend of mine, very experienced in a storm right now that I don't, I would never have to experience because I don't have kids. But it's one thing I want to say about those, that family is how inspired I was by how they stood and how they still praise God and still worship him in the midst of the storm. It was very inspirational to me because what I see in the life of a lot of church folk is when they go through something, instead of them running to God, they run from God. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. In the steadfastness, we got to learn to be steadfast in the midst of circumstances. We have to learn how to stand our ground. Somebody shout, stand our ground. So watch what it says here in John 4, verse number 23. But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshiper shall worship the Father in spirit and in what class? Truth. For the Father seeketh such a worshiper or such to worship him. God is a spirit. God is a what class? Spirit. And they that worship him must worship him how? In spirit and what else? Class in truth. So we worship God in spirit because we are spirit. We are spirit. And God says he requires of us to worship him. Now check this out, guys. If we are spirits, that means worship is a spiritual thing. Amen. Come on, everybody shout amen. amen. Worship is a what? Spiritual thing. And uh, if it's a spiritual thing, that means it has the ability to do um, things in the spirit realm that we're not able to do. Can I get somebody to say amen? amen. That I cannot operate in the natural and um, try to use natural means to fight spiritual battles. Amen. I cannot use natural me. Now, you know, I come from, you know, uh, I come from a, a, a generation where if somebody threatened you, um, you didn't punk out, amen? I mean, either you put your dukes up or you get beat down, amen? That's just the truth of the matter, amen? However, when we're dealing with spiritual things, we have to use spiritual weapons to, to fight spiritual battles. Unfortunately, there's a lot of folk who go to church, they don't even know they're in a battle. Because they've never been told about the spirit realm. Amen. All they've ever been told about is what they see. And a lot of them, they're fighting battles, oh glory to God, against people. And it's not the people that they ought to be waging war against. Amen. Because the devil, he will use anybody he can to derail the believer from living out their purpose. Amen. He will use accusations. He would use persecution. He would do all kinds of stuff to try to keep the believer from experiencing the fullness of who God is. That is why when you come into the kingdom and when you leave the world, you better make sure you gird it up because the enemy, he's going to work day and night to try to drag you back to the place God delivered you from. Somebody shout, the devil is a liar. I refuse to go back to the dope house. Amen. I refuse to go back to the whole house or whatever house I was hanging out in. I refuse to go back to it because God's grace and his mercy and it do it forever. And he brought me out for such a time as this. And I'm not backing off of what I believe just because a few corner minded people don't understand why I want to serve God. Why not serve God? I served the world and it didn't pay me absolutely nothing but headache and heartache. Since I I've been on this side life has not been perfect it has not been good but God has brought me out Amen. oh glory to God Hallelujah. I say glory to God Hallelujah. somebody shout glory to, glory to God so we are spirits and we're in a spiritual battle amen. and we use spiritual weapons to fight the battle amen, amen. this is not about bows and arrows and guns because the first attack that the devil launches on the believer is the attack of the mind. Amen. And I say this all the time. If you can whip him in your thinking, you can whip him in your life. Amen. Amen. So we've been talking about this praise and about this worship. And um, I've been really trying to um, change the, the way we think about worship on Sunday morning. 
of not just Sunday morning, but worship is a lifestyle. Yes. Somebody say amen to that. Yes. We ought to have a lifestyle of worship. Amen. We ought to have an attitude of gratitude that every day we wake up, we wake up with this adoration to God and with this praise to God and with this worship to God. Not because of what he is doing, but we ought to just be thankful for what he already done. Amen. I'm so glad to have experienced some of what God has already done in my life. As a matter of fact, I would not, I have to say this very carefully because you hear people say certain things and you say, really? The experiences that I've had in life, it has caused me to draw closer to God than I ever had before. I thought I knew God and I thought I was close to God until God attacked my body. Then I realized I'm not as close to God as I think I am. Come on, somebody say amen. All right, let's go to some scripture. First Samuel. Did I tell you to go there? No. Go there. First Samuel 16, verse number 7. So we found out that true worshipers, we worship in spirit and we worship in truth. Amen. 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 All right? True worshipers. Not this fabricated worship that we see. Amen. Amen. Not, this, not this worship that we see people kind of do from a fleshly place. Because watch this. A lot of stuff you see folk call worship really ain't worship. Amen. It's just a bunch of noise. It's just a bunch of, you know, uh, flesh um, responding or acting in a way um, that really doesn't bring much glory to God. But it can cause, you know, this, this whole uh, attitude of, hey, that's spiritual because why they doing it? They talking in tongues. Come on, Amen. <laughs> and just because you talk in tongues don't mean that's spiritual. That's right. Praise the Lord. Right. Quiet in the house of the Lord. They got a few folks in here tonight because it's raining. All the rest of y'all, you got to go to church in the rain. Watch this. Go to Psalm 16, verse number 7. But the Lord said unto Samuel, watch what he says, look not on his countenance. So here's Samuel getting ready to go and um, um, name the next king. Do not look on his countenance or on his height or his stature because I have refused him. For the Lord see it, not as man see it. For man look on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the what class heart. So the Bible says, the Lord is really not looking at what we look like externally. Amen. When we worship him, he's looking for the heart. Now, Samuel went to anoint David as king. But before he got there, the Lord told him to make sure that when you go to Jesse's house, you don't look at the outward appearance of who they're going to present in front of you. Amen. Remember, David was a worshiper before he ever killed Goliath. All right, so let me give you some things tonight. We already talked about what is worship. We already talked about why we should have a lifestyle of worship. And we said it's critical that we discuss the reasons why we should have a lifestyle. Then we gave you seven dimensions of praise. We dealt with them. And tonight, I want to deal with um, some things that I believe will bless you. Turn me up just a little bit, Lou. And deal with some things that I think will bless you real good. Because if praise is a lifestyle... That means that regardless of what approaches us, we going to give God praise in any way. Amen. Now, I had to really get this principle down in my spirit because when you're going through something as tragic as, as, as what I went through, and, and you hear me say this all the time, and a lot of people, they say, really, he going to talk about that again? Yes, I am. Amen. Because God brought me out of it. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. Uh, you going to talk about the Cowboys. Every time I look on here, somebody talking about the Cowboys. Amen. Man, I'm not interested in how many games the Cowboys winning. Amen. I'm interested in that Jesus died on the cross and rose on the third day. So I might be healed. Amen. 
Now, I'm not mad with nobody you like who you like, but I'm trying to get you to understand something that we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and by the words of our testimony. I'm going to always, until they come pick me up on a chariot and take me over into heaven, I'm going to always testify that it was the Lord that brought me out that hospital. So somebody ought to say amen. Hey, man, I don't want to get myself caught up, man, because I can start thinking about how good God was to me in that hospital. When everything else was failing, God already saw my future, and he saw me in the healed and not in the sick. Go to John 10 and 10 real quick. I'm always going to give God praise and thank God for bringing me out this situation. My God, I look better on this side than I did on the other side. They all counted me out, but God said, I saw your praise. Are you willing to praise him when they give you a bad report? Come on, somebody. Are you willing to praise him when they lay you off? Come on now. Are you going to walk out with your hands up? Because God has a way of opening one door when another one's shut. All right, watch this. So, so Psalm 60, where I tell you how to go? John 10, 39, he said, and, and she said, a sister called Mary, which also said that Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha, who was cumbered, who was cumbered, cumbered, what is that? Cumber. Let me tell you what she was. She, her nerves was bad, amen. <laughs> About much serving, um, and she came to him and said, Lord, um, dost thou not care that my sister had left to serve alone, left me to serve alone? Um, bid her, therefore, that she should help me. Amen. We can't get so consumed, watch this, guys, with stuff that's going on around us um, that when the word of God show up, we don't come and sit at the feet of Jesus and listen to what he have to say. And Jesus said, answered and said unto her, Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things, but one thing is needful. And Mary had chosen um, that good part, which shall not be taken away from her. So Jesus said, why are you worried about that? You need to come sit down, and you need to come hear the word, and you need to come and understand how to worship me, and forget about the dishes, and forget about all the stuff that you're going through, and come and sit at the feet of Jesus, and open up his word sometime, and learn how to praise him, sometimes even by yourself, amen. We worried about too much stuff. So, I want you to go, and I want you to go with me to, um, real quick, ah, do I want to go there? Go with me to um, 2 Chronicles 2, because um, when, you, when you know the personality of a person, it changes how you see them people, see the people that you know their personality. Um, if you know anything about me, you know I'm a very jubilant individual. I like to have fun. Amen. Amen. I, I mean, I'm, I, listen, w w why sit around and be stressed? Amen. Amen. Why sit around and be consumed with all the wrong that's going on in your life? Why sit around and, and, and be worried about somebody else's burdens? Amen. Why take on? See, I'm not going to live the rest of my life in no other way but happy. Amen. I don't care what it look like. Now, some people think that, yeah, you got all your needs met. How you know I have all my needs met? Here's what you would never know. You would never know if I do or if I don't. Amen. Because my demeanor would never be an indicator that I'm going through anything. If somebody had to ask you, are you all right? It could be because of your demeanor. Because even though you may not feel like it, God still deserves you to be a light in dark places. Amen. All right, so watch this right here. Cool. So, so if you know me, you know several things about me. Number one, I'm, I'm very jubilant. Now, I mean, it takes a whole lot to, to run me hot. I usually don't get angry. Uh, I just don't believe that it, it, you, you should waste energy being angry. And that may be a bad thing because 
And you know, you can be angry, but the Bible said don't sin. And I think when you don't express anger sometimes, a uh, frustration, people take advantage of you. You know what I'm saying? And as a pastor, you know, you, you got to be careful. It's a thin line that you have to have when you deal with people because some people wear their feelings on their shoulders. Amen. Yeah. They, don't, they, don't, they don't know how to take correction as, as, as corrective criticism. They think you are attacking them when you simply attack them and perform. You can do better. But if they're emotional, they carry their feelings on their shoulder and everything calls them, you know, um, to be uptight and to be upset. You know, they pick up their marbles and they run in the house, but they don't win the game. I don't want to be around people like that. Amen. Amen. If you know anything about me, I'm a very generous person. Amen. I believe in being generous. I, I love blessing people. I'm not talking about just with monetary stuff. But you know, you can bless somebody just with a conversation. Amen. 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 I was going into the elevator the other day when I was leaving the hospital, and this guy was on the elevator with me, and he had just got, you know, some, he was going into the same place that I was going into to get his labs done. And, um, you know, um, he came out the same time I came out. Um, good job to those who do our labs. Amen. Amen. And um, he said, man, you know, I'm sure hoping things come out right for me. You know, he said, you came out the same time I did. Why you look so happy? I said, because I trust Amen. that the God I serve, Amen. that whatever is wrong, he can make it right. Amen. Come on, somebody. And I say, you know what you need to do, my brother? You need to trust that the God you serve, if there was anything wrong, he can make it right. And so instead of us, you know, being concerned, let's go ahead and have us a little praise break in this elevator. Somebody shout amen. amen. So when the elevator hit the first floor, I come out the elevator clapping amen. Somebody ought to say amen. Because I believe that God is a God that he can do something by this time tomorrow. Amen. 